Hi, I'm Don from Don Drones On. All drone pilots in Canada are required to have some basic radio communications knowledge, despite the fact that use of aviation radios is not mandatory. So why should we learn about radios? Well, firstly, there are radio questions on both the basic and advanced RPAS pilot exams. Secondly, listening on aviation frequencies is considered a good additional risk mitigation factor, particularly when operating in high traffic areas. And thirdly, you may be required to initiate a radio call in very specific scenarios. So with these three reasons in mind, let's dive into radio knowledge for drone pilots in Canada. This is the first of a three-part series. In this video, we're going to get into some basic radio theory, and I'll talk about the various radio bands. In part two, we'll discuss when and how you should be using a radio. And then in part three, we'll discuss the format and etiquette of aviation radio calls. What are radio waves anyway? Radio waves are electromagnetic waves that propagate outwards from radio antennas, much like ripples in a pond, but in three dimensions and at the speed of light. If you counted the number of pond ripples reaching the shore every minute, that would be the frequency of those waves. And the frequency of radio waves is the number of cycles or peaks of that wave received per second. So 100 megahertz, for example, means 100 million waves are received every second. Hertz, by the way, means cycles per second. Now, the inverse of frequency is wavelength, which is the distance between the pond ripples or the length of one of those radio wave cycles from peak to peak. The other measurement for radio waves is amplitude, which is simply the magnitude of those waves, which is indicative of the strength of the signal. The amplitude of radio waves, just like ripples in the pond, decreases with distance. The frequency and wavelength, however, do not change with the distance. In addition to distance, there are other factors that can affect the quality of a radio signal. Perhaps the most important one is interference from other electronic transmissions at or near the same frequency as your signal. These other transmissions can be signals from other radios transmitting or various kinds of sputtering noise from electrical equipment like power lines, motors, or transformers. And a radio jammer is a device used to deliberately transmit noise in certain frequency ranges to deliberately disrupt communications. Radio jammers are illegal in Canada. Man-made or natural elements can also affect signal quality. Metallic structures like metal roofs, or frames or wiring in walls, metal fences, or even the body of your car can contribute to degrading your signal. And bodies of water, precipitation in the air, and even moisture in the leaves of trees can also affect signal quality. Strangely, these metal and water elements can affect transmissions even if they're not in the direct line of sight between a transmitter and receiver. What happens is that the signal bounces off these things and gets scattered, arriving at the receiver still on the same frequency, but delayed a bit, almost like echoes. This kind of interference from things that are not in the direct line of sight between a transmitter and receiver is called the Fresnel effect. So when you're attempting to maintain a good radio connection, try to avoid these nasty metallic or wet items in the vicinity of the straight path, it's another reason to keep your drone in visual line of sight. One other thing that can create interference for radio transmissions is geomagnetic storms, basically radio storms in the Earth's upper atmosphere. The intensity of geomagnetic storms is measured using a system called the KP index. Avoid flying your drone if the KP index is high, five or more. Now, getting back to frequencies, some clever engineers divided up the entire radio spectrum into various frequency bands, 
And I swear they must have been doing this over a few beers. Here we have high frequency, then very high frequency or VHF, then ultra high frequency UHF, then super high frequency, then extremely high frequency. And then they must have laughed long and hard at tremendously high frequency. I think I might have got along well with these characters. Anyways, the point is that different kinds of applications are assigned to subbands within each of these ranges. And for those of us old enough to remember channel dials on TVs, we might recognize VHF and UHF as ranges of TV channels assigned to those bands. But the notion of a channel isn't limited to TV. Confusingly, channels can be specific frequencies within a band or a set of defined frequencies. When channels are referring to particular frequencies, the channel spacing refers to the distance in kilohertz or megahertz between these individual channels. For drone pilots, there are two sets of radio bands of interest. The radio band used to communicate digitally between your controller and the drone. And secondly, the radio bands used for voice communications with manned aircraft. Let's start with the band or bands that your drone controller uses to communicate with your drone. For DJI drones, this is either 2.4 gigahertz in the UHF band or 5.8 gigahertz in the SHF band. In both these cases, there are a multitude of channels available separated by one megahertz. So when someone says their connection is 2.4 gigahertz, what they really mean is that they're using one or more channels near 2.4 gigahertz. By the way, the DJI OcuSync system does a sweep of the available channels on these bands before your flight and picks channels with the least amount of interference. And it can change frequencies during the flight to ensure the least amount of interference. And on the DJI Go 4 app, you can see the channels selected and the degree of interference on the other channels. This kind of channel review is called an RF sweep. An RF sweep is basically a systematic analysis of available channels using a spectrum analyzer, in this case built right into an app, looking for interference and good channels. When you're flying, you obviously don't want any surprise interference. So if your crew is using other electronic devices, it is best if they are, first of all, as far away as possible from your control system. And secondly, that they switch on their equipment first to ensure your drone detects them and avoids channels that they could be interfering on. I mentioned two radio bands of interest to drone pilots. The second one is the so-called air band. No, no, not that. That's air guitar, not air band. The air band is a sub band of the VHF band, strangely nestled between TV channels six and seven, as it happens, reserved for aeronautical voice communications in Canada. The air band is a set of 760 individual channels with 25 kilohertz spacing between 118 and 137 megahertz. When you flip through the CFS on a sleepless night, you will notice that all radio frequencies for airports, towers, and other aviation services are between 118 and 137 megahertz. Now, there are a few exceptions. In northern regions, a lower frequency band is used, and military air communications usually are on a higher UHF frequency range. Use of the air band is strictly regulated. All equipment transmitting in this band must be licensed by Industry Canada, and all people using this band, other than for listening, must hold what is called a ROC A license, a registered operator certificate with aeronautical qualification, again issued by Industry Canada. So, if you decide to go out and buy a handheld aviation band transceiver, be sure to find a ROC A examiner and take the ROC A exam before going on the air. 
there is an excellent government-issued study guide for the Rock A called, of course, the RIC 21. And, and I've put a link to the, in the description below this video to the RIC 21 document. That said, there are also a number of apps and websites that allow you to listen to air traffic communications just using your phone or computer. www.liveatc.net is one of those. Listen to that for a few minutes and you'll be scared off of radio communications for life. But it is good practice to listen to. Well, there you have it. Some basic theory about radio transmission and the radio spectrum. In the next video in this three-part series, I'll explain the reasons a drone operator would actually use an aviation radio. And until then, thank you for watching. <music>